for City Lights on Novus TV. I'm Deidre Suriani. We are so excited to be visiting our friends here at the Float House today as floating has become so popular ever since they opened up their doors. Let's go chat with Mike and find out a little bit more about this unique experience. Tell me the story behind the Float House and how you got into floating. My brother and I discovered floating online, just kind of randomly searching on YouTube. And that was probably 2010. And we went and sought out a float tank in Coquitlam, actually, where there was a lady who had one in her basement. It was a massage therapist who had a home practice. And so we went and tried floating. And after that one time each, we were so kind of blown away by it that we decided to buy our own tank. Bought that tank, put it into my condo in North Vancouver, and started hosting people out of my condo. And that became like our test market to develop the business plan for Float House. And we put our business plan together and we pitched the idea for the initial five tank center of Float House in Gastown. What is floating? Floating is a practice where you enter into a flotation tank, also known as a sensory deprivation tank. It's an enclosed environment that has 10 inches of water and we put 900 pounds of Epsom salts diluted into the solution, so it's extremely dense. It's actually three times as dense as the Dead Sea. And so you float effortlessly. The water is also heated to the same temperature as the surface of your skin. So once you settle into the solution and you don't really move around anymore, it's hard for your skin receptors to tell the difference of where your body ends and the water begins. On top of that, it's also pitch black inside. You don't see anything, and your ears are under the water with earplugs, so you don't hear anything. So the point of the environment is to minimize as much sensory input coming into your nervous system as possible, and consequently we have a very relaxing response. How often should people float to get the results that they want? Um, any type of regular practice with it is best. Like doing it, whether it's once a month, or once every two weeks, or once a week, those are probably the most common frequencies that we experience here. The best thing is doing it regularly. You know, if you do it once and then take off for like three, four months and come back to it, that first float back is a little jagged. It takes time to kind of get back into the groove of it again. As long as you do something relatively consistently, whether it's monthly, bi-monthly, or once a week even, then you'll probably see better results. How would floating complement yoga and a good night's sleep? It's very complementary with any forms of activity. So whether it's yoga or resistance training or cardiovascular training, because it lets you get really still afterwards. It's really nice to do your float after your activity because one, you get to come and shower off, which is kind of nice. You want to shower after your exercise anyways. But also, since you've already kind of expelled all that you know, pent up energy within you from your exercise, now you can get really still and really calm. And whether it's for, again, recovery purposes or for meditation, it's just really complimentary after exercise. What would you say to someone who's claustrophobic? Claustrophobia is probably one of the most common things we encounter by people that aren't super familiar with floating. But overall, once they get in there and they have no perception of boundaries, it actually feels much more expansive than constricting. And once you get over that little mental hurdle of it, then you can really let go. It's actually a beautifully relaxing experience. What is the height and weight maximum to fit into one of these tanks? We had someone recently come in. He was an ex-WWE wrestler. He was seven feet tall and 428 pounds, and he fit into our tanks. So the tanks are quite large. You have lots of space in there, and uh, it's very comfortable. Can you tell us more about what we can expect when we walk into a float house? If it's your first time, we're going to show you a briefing video that kind of takes you step by step through the procedures here, and then you'll be shown to your room. So we have uh, nine float rooms here in Gastown with uh, a private shower and each having their own tank. They're all separate off and you'll actually have the room for two hours so you have time to shower before and after to get dressed and then you can go and use our vanity space after your float to do your hair or makeup or whatever we have a couple washrooms here obviously and then we have a great post float lounge space that you will definitely want to take advantage of after a float and have some tea and just relax because you are kind of isolated from the whole world for a while so it's nice to come back and just ground yourself afterwards before you get into the real world if you haven't been to the Float House, you guys have to check this place out. It is so relaxing. The experience was so cool. I could totally just relax and I feel so refreshed right now. For more information on booking at the Float House, go to floathouse.ca. For City Lights on Novus TV, I'm Deidre Suriani.